there was this little uh, Japanese fighting game round table, right? The table was not round, Matthew or Justin. <laughs> Hi, guys. <laughs> was it like a square hey, or a rectangle? It or was straight. Octagon? I feel betrayed. Um, and the, the Japanese fighting game round table hasn't happened in a long time. And yeah. uh, it, this time it wasn't produced by Harada and the giant megalo conglomerate that is Bandai Namco. It was produced by Sega. And the, huh. the very first question that Sega put on to all the Japanese developers, the very first one was the viability of free-to-play fighting games. Um, and that's what I want to... I'm surprised. I'm surprised it was that. And like, how can we get Terry into more things? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm shocked. That, that's it's a big deal if that was the first question they asked. Um, I did not catch it because I assume you guys would catch me up to it. So, so yeah, I, I didn't I didn't watch it either. I was like in New York while it's happening, but I noticed a lot of conversation on Twitter and a lot of people were streaming it on Twitch. Right, obviously, I think Giuna was doing the the English translation for pretty much the roundtable. Yeah, and uh, it's similar to previous Japanese fighting game roundtables. There's some like announcements which people are waiting for, some trailers. But then they 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 have these like topics of conversation that happen earlier. Sometimes they would talk about like rollback netcode. Sometimes they would not talk about rollback netcode. <laughs> Much to your chagrin. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And um, the fact it was pretty pronounced to me that Sega would open their conversation with free to play fighting games because of the recent success that they had with Virtua Fighter Ultimate Showdown, uh, technically starting off as a free-to-play game on PlayStation Network, uh, at least for the first couple months or so. Mm. Um, and I think it's like a decent time to talk about this because, I don't know, to me, it's I think we have a future where free-to-play is going to be a big thing uh, eventually. Maybe not for the giant games, but for a lot of fighting games, this might be a path that makes a lot of sense. And... I'm trying to break down which ones does it make the most sense for. Um, and I think we should I think we should first start with like our experiences with free to play fighting games in general. If you've actually ever tried any and I was going to shoot it over to like Justin, have you ever actually experienced much less participated, much less uh, tried out any of the free to play fighting games over the past like 10 years in any way? So. My only recollection of like free to play fighting games is it's it's not even I don't know if you consider it a real free to play fighting game, uh, but Killer Instinct, Killer Instinct when it first came out, what that was considered as free to play, but then now you can actually buy the game right on Steam and stuff like that, so it's not really fully free to play. But I think during that time frame of the Xbox One. Uh, it was free to play, so that was my experience. You know, I cracked already. I'm not gonna wait one week or two weeks or whatever they rotate. I just bought the, bought all the characters, right? Yeah. Uh, but ultimately, I you know right away I bought all the characters. So pretty much, I, it seems like I already bought the full game regardless. Even if it's free to play for a person that loves fighting games, naturally you're just gonna buy the whole cast compared to somebody who just wants to try the game out. You know, this week one is Jago, then the second week is Saber Wolf, stuff like that. It's to to get more people into it, which makes perfect sense. Uh, but for me, I mean, I bought the characters and that was probably my only time playing a free to play fighting game besides uh, Rising Thunder, which is kind of like a beta at that point. Considering considering the game that's being mentioned, uh, Matt, I'm actually really curious to ask you this. Back when we found out that KI wasn't going to be, quote unquote, like a real big game, like it was going to be yeah. like this little XBLA slash free to play game. How heartbroken were you to hear that back in like 2013? <laughs> Um, not that heartbroken because I quickly saw how I forget who it was, Microsoft or somebody jumped on that because that was like misreported where Microsoft was. was not using the word free to play. It was like they're using some like weird combination where they were just basically going like it's free to start or yeah. wh whatever. Yeah. It was IGN, I think, that said, oh, it's free to play. It's free to play. And that gave Killer Instinct like a negative reception for a little while because people trying to get to understand what exactly it was. And, you know, KI kind of uh, sort of innovated in that season seasonal model because no one was really quite doing it like that. Yeah, other games had DLC fighters, but I, I for me, like a free to play that I actually I did play Tekken Revolution for like 
a half hour. Me too. And I I don't <laughs> understand any of it. I just know that that vampire chick was part of it. Yeah. And that's all I remember. And then, uh, God, what, what what was that new character that we saw? Not to, not not new character, but someone said, "Oh, there's this awesome uh, Taekwondo girl in that Tekken mobile game that no one remembers." Oh, there's like a new I saw character, that character design. There. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. I don't know her name though because I didn't play Tekken Mobile. Dude, that's the that's female Kim Cap Wan from King of Fighters All Star. The you know pretty much. <laughs> she she just um, jumped games. I I that I completely lost memory that that thing existed. Wasn't there also a DOA like an actual? There was one other major fighting game franchise that said, "Here's a separate SKU uh, where it's free, like the entire game except for you know buying accessories or whatever." And I can't remember now if it was dead or alive, but there's some other service another game had. Does anyone? Am it I was, a crazy man? Well, it was definitely uh, DOA five. Right. And, and had a model to talk like about the that, other ones. Yeah. yeah. DOA five essentially launched a kind of abysmal sales. Yeah. Um, and then it found oh. a ridiculous amount of success. Like, I don't know how long later, but Tecmo or whoever was producing the game at the time was like, you know what? We're going to make the game free to play. So they made like the core. It was like the core fighters pack that cost nothing. Uh, wasn't it uh, Soul Calibur? Wasn't there uh, a free to play Soul Calibur? There I, I don't remember okay. that. I'm going to say no, but there should have been. <laughs> there I, absolutely I'm seeing, should have been. I'm seeing Soul Calibur online. Lost Swords. Lost, Lost Swords. I'm it's having, so lost, we don't remember I, it. I'm having trouble remembering what Soul Calibur Lost Swords <laughs> even is. Uh, it's from twenty. It's from 2013. I'm seeing a video. It sounds like a Dynasty Warrior type of game going on. Maybe I don't know. We'll have to. Well, I, I'm sure. I, holy, I have erased this from my memory. <laughs> so yeah, okay. VG24 Soul Calibur Lost Swords is a free to play and coming to PlayStation Three. Okay, wow. That, did it get canceled? Because why do we not remember any of this? I I don't think it got canceled. This to me looks exactly like the Tekken Revolution did. Revolution. Yeah. 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 Um, so wow. So and then and well, let's go back to KI because well, I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah. Let's go back to KI in a second because KI is one that actually does a model of free to play that's relatively good. Here, here's <laughs> here's the issue is that in the same way that like you and me when we heard free to play for KI back in 2013, it seems scary because the the term free to play has so much um, like angry sinew associated with it in the industry for like 10 plus years and mobile games and everything that there's a way to do free to play good. There's ways to do free to play okay. And the 99 degrees of not, this is awful, the worst shit. Like, I hate this, you know? And it was worse back then, like nine years ago. Oh, like, yeah. free to play was even like, it has m way more negative connotations back then. Now it's like lessened a little bit because so many games do it and so many big successful games do it. Yeah. But like, the, the this a Tekken and Soul Calibur, I have to assume they all failed. Like, on a, and those are big franchises. Is Soul Calibur the biggest one nowadays? It's not, but Tekken certainly was. And like, is is there ever going to be a Street Fighter one like this? Probably not. I think Capcom will want to do the 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 live service sort of model. That, but that's like when things start getting really blended together. Yeah. Well, it's like, like kind of where Street Fighter Five is right now. Yeah, kind of. Street yeah. Five. I, but you know, I think what they could do since they they already have like all the assets and they already re, re released so many versions what if they made a free-to-play version for more of the older titles that probably won't come back for as a collection right they could do that right and, and pretty much get people you know it's pretty much data to see how many people would be interested in playing these characters or this game or just capcom ip in general well that's what kind of what sega did with virtual fighter but they had yeah. a gimmick right they had like we're remaking the whole game in the Ryu Gotoku, whatever the heck it is, engine, the Yakuza engine. Yep. And we're just going to... I think it's actually called Dragon Engine. I'm is it just, sure. Okay, it's Dragon Engine. So they're like... I think hey, so. We're just going to remake every character in the Dragon Engine, and this will be different. I think the only issue that comes with like... And I agree with you. It would be neat if it was like a bunch of classic games that people can just play with like decent netcode, like officially outside of a fightcade. Yeah. But monetizing that's hard. Like... Mm. how do you get into the code and start adding new colors like officially like that stuff is a lot harder 
like e even though fans do it every single day the decision making process behind that is, a, is a, takes a lot more time on like an actual development end and releasing it so yeah, you can't just true. put out skins you know like hey here you go buy these because so that's what sega did sega was like hey buy our skins buy our customization packs and apparently they sold a shit ton of them because that shit was good in, in Virtual Fighter, like the uh, VF1 models, and now there's Tekken costumes coming yep. to it. It's interesting, and Virtual Fighter is a really interesting uh, franchise to try this with, because it doesn't have a lot of the stuff people are accustomed to. Like, there's not any real story tying the game together. There's not any crazy, like, you know, extra modes or something. It's, like, you know, a basic fighting game package, and, like, but, but saying, hey, here's all these... Uh, uh, customization options and and stages too wasn't there like vf1 stages and music packs as there, well there was some extra stuff like that yeah and all that stuff was cool it was cool to like uh just play virtual fighter like all oh, this is a classic virtual fighter 5 that you you've played over the last 12 years but here's all these little like extras and and little modes to just go oh this is a nice fresh coat of paint Kay. and and I, it seemed like it was a big success oh, a big success but Sega said something like, you know, like a press release or something like this actually did quite well. We're happy, right? Uh, sort of. Not really. Sorta? There's okay. uh, there's a long story behind that. By the way, can I just like a, a biggest smile just like cracked on my face like the damn Joker. <laughs> I was just like, man, we're talking about Virtual Fighter in 2022. <laughs> like, like, I love this so much. I'm like, this is so cool. I mean, they're trying, right? They're, they, 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 they did release the, the, the PS, what, PS, the PlayStation version of like Final Showdown uh recently what during the guilty gear strive release right um, yeah it was so, it was a rough yeah, it was period the same month, yeah, huh? it, it was rough like it was a bad timing that they released it but the execution in terms of like the game and the online it was good a lot of people loved it too right and then guilty gear strive came out it definitely didn't feature like rollback netcode it featured this weird hybrid thing of like yeah. server based netcode which could either go pretty well for some people or very not well where you get connected to some person like if you're like in africa you just have no chance of getting a good connection <laughs> um but they uh and i was looking up tech and revolution to see like the the differences here um you were asking matt do we know virtual fighter was successful um mm. Uh, number one, I, I, there there was some hints, pretty brutal hints between Harada and the lead producer dude that Sega that was kind of like headlining this big fighting game roundtable. And the reason Sega is the one that's responsible for this one is because, yes, they're they're like jumping into the scene and they have stuff to show their tech and costumes. And they've been they've been given uh, a little bit of like a piece of the pie finally. Right. But okay. they haven't officially said anything because Sega's Sega's uh, uh, executives don't want to talk about it. But there was a one interview uh, between Harada and the lead producer guy on Harada's bar. And the guy had like on his shirt a golden eight. And this was like three ish, four ish weeks after VF uh, came out. And the, the entire point of the whole conversation is Harada is trying to grill this dude about <laughs> how much, how many people downloaded it, how much did you sell? Harada's like, I want Virtual Fighter to be popular so I can steal stuff for Tekken 8. Yeah. <laughs> and, and long story short, like, that's like the big conversation they're having. Like, Virtual Fighter and Tekken have this huge history of just, like, complimenting each other, you know? And mm -hmm. uh, it, it eventually boils down that the guy is not telling him. He just won't tell him. This is an entire gimmick. The entire conversation is a huge gimmick. But the Sega dude <laughs> is essentially alluding that in about like three weeks time frame, uh, Virtua Fighter had about 8 million downloads. 8 million. 8 wow. million. Wow. I was thinking that's a 800, lot. Of, yeah. I was thinking 800 K. Me too. Me too. And that, that's the number I was sticking closer to. But apparently it was hugely successful. And I know a lot of people are immediately like, 8 million downloads, who cares? Like, that's whatever. It's because they're, they're, those, those are free games. Those but are free, whatever, yeah. yeah. When you have 8 million like customers that have the game installed, you don't even have to have that many of that 8 million buying a couple of... A DLC like packs for the uh, the costumes and and whatever you can have a very small amount and like still make that could be quite profitable I'd imagine yeah and you have to think about the comparison like if Virtua Fighter 5 Ultimate Showdown came out in 22 with relatively not okay netcode looks a bit better and cost like 30 bucks 
would it have been nearly as successful? I'd say no. No, I don't think so either. You know? Mm -hmm. I agree. So it, then they, they had an opportunity. They're like, hey, well, we're just going to make the whole thing free. And you can buy extra costume packs and small little small little things on the side that Virtual Fighter is known for. Virtual Fighter started the big customization thing with VF4, you know? Yeah, I always, I always forget that's where, like, initially... Yeah, it's where Tekken stole it from. Yes. It's a, it's a funny history these games have. That's funny. Yeah, it's like it's, all the 3D it, games follow that suit. Like, even DOA had had those uh, those skins. You know, added like, those little accessories on characters. So, I mean, that's kind of what people like. Like, if they, I could imagine... I could see Street Fighter Six do it. Tekken 7 already do with Akuma, right? Akuma in the scuba outfit. Why not have it in Street Fighter Six? <laughs> that should be on the cover. Like, it should be Akuma with the scuba outfit. I think there's this really funny quote from Ono like five years ago on Street Fighter uh, Five, where he's talking about like customization. He's like, you know what? I don't think Ryu should be wearing a funny hat. <laughs> <laughs> and like cut to shot of B-Boy Ryu. Like, mm. yeah, the, that's <laughs> like, the, 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 reb, the, rebel, the rebel costume. Yeah. <laughs> It's like the the amount of I mean that's the value of of 3D games like especially nowadays it's like we can just make anything like a, a put it on the characters you don't have to like redraw sprites and stuff so when Street Fighter went fully 3D they went to town with it and I uh, me and uh, I was gonna make a Crime Tina critiques video Street Fighter Five just like a few weeks ago with my wife and we were gonna critique all the costumes all of them and you've done similar videos you'll to be this, there Max. for a while Matt <laughs> I'm being there for a while because there's still costumes coming I would have been so pissed if we had done that video spent hours and hours critiquing all 300 costumes and then Capcom goes oh we have we have a Capcom Pro Tour update here's some more costumes. And the greatest colors, stage, the greatest stage ever. <laughs> yeah, I know that too. It's a good stage. Um, what, what were the answers that um, some of the uh, uh, fighting game magnates at that the round table? What did they say? Uh, sorry, at the not round table. Yeah. What did they say in, in regards to that question about free to play? So the most interesting one, um, a, a lot of them seem very hesitant, right? It's funny that Sega is the one asking this because Sega essentially got a taste of what what could be a possibility. Um, but if you, t if you take a look at like Capcom and Namco, their, their distribution is like, no, we make full, fr full price games and they come out and people buy them and they'll sell millions of copies because they're Street Fighter and Tekken, you know, e even Street Fighter had its own issues at the start for sure. But after several years now, Street Fighter five has gone on to be pretty successful. Yeah. So it's kind of weird to ask like these bigger companies, you have a situation where VF is trying to jump back into this space and be something that people might know about or be, to get introduced to. And it would have a difficult time being introduced at a premium price point. Um, but now that they've, they've, they've tried that and it worked, Namco's essentially like, I don't know why we would do this. I don't see the reason why we would do this. We tried this with Tekken Revolution. It didn't work, you know? <laughs> and it's like, yeah, like you, you go back and you think about this old stuff and it's like, yeah, you know, I don't. Tekken Revolution was doing something very different and it was essentially and harada said this trying to emulate the arcade with like tokens and like i don't know if i don't know if you guys played it i played it very briefly because once i realized what it was i was like oh you're trying to do it like an arcade experience but it sucks <laughs> like like you needed tokens to like fight next matches online and the yeah. game had terrible net code and it was just it was just tech and tag but 1v1 right so it just took a bunch of assets from tech and tag and then you had to like wait to the next day to get your token like replaced that that early 2010s okay, yeah. free to play like time you know time is now the value thing you know I yeah. don't understand why would it fail that sounds great <laughs> <laughs> but you but you can you could probably spend money to to re I guess refresh your tokens right exactly and, that, and that's where your ah. stamina bar for that's the the standard gotcha game where if you run out of stamina or tokens in, in this regard uh you would have to wait for like what two hours for one refresh token or so forth so forth or spend some real cash to play more paid that's a pay to win strategy at that at that point that's that's relatively what they were doing um it, it was it was pay to pay to play sort of like just like an arcade right the idea is that i see i see in their heads they're like man if we make a free-to-play game 
and we put it out and people spend more than full price on it you know because it's like an arcade because if even if you play old arcade games there's a good chance you're spending more than 50 to 60 bucks on an arcade game back in the day i True. definitely did on most yeah. fighting games 100 percent because the, the the thought process behind free to play nowadays, especially something Max I think has touched upon in a previous episode, is that the whole point of these for fighting games nowadays is to break down that sixty dollar barrier of entry that real casual people that like the look of these characters, they like Mai or they like Jin or they like you know Chun Li, but they're like oh, I don't want to spend you know a full price and then get my shit kicked in online. So if you break that down and then you monetize it with stuff that we've already seen, like costumes in Killer Instinct or um, Virtual Fighter, what have you, like that's the model they, but now like Namco is just like, no, we tried it, even though it was a very different thing. Exactly. We're just not going to try it yeah. again. Yeah, but, that's, uh, and that's their mentality. Yeah. Like we did that. It didn't work. So mm. what about if developers, obviously the one thing I think when, it, when I think about free to play is betas. Right, fighting game betas. Everyone loves fighting game betas. Everyone, whatever you got planned that day, you cancel that for fighting game beta. So when yeah. GG, when Guilty Gear Strive did their beta, or Street Fighter Five did their beta, and DNF did their beta, wouldn't they? Shouldn't they take that data on how many people downloaded that beta and think about like, oh, these are all these people that are interested, that possibly interested in the next fighting game, right? Well, that could yeah. be good information for them to think about if we do the free to play we have the data that all these people were interested to at least try it out for like the first hour or two free to so free to try yeah free to try because of the beta or just put out a demo along like you know it's basically essentially a demo but at launch like but the the virtual fighter thing the more i think about it the more interesting it is because it wasn't free to play technically not it was it was a free game. It debuted as a free game on PlayStation Plus. Yeah. Or PlayStation Now or, or whatever you it was. You needed a subscription. Yeah. And then after the month went by, then Virtual Fighter still costs money. Uh, right? Yeah. It, 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 was, it essentially rolled back to what I think it would it would normally cost. And it was somewhere between like, yeah, 20 to 30 bucks. Okay. That's what it was. Because, yeah, I, I did get it at launch. So it was free for me. But that... I mean, you put out a fighting game. Like, let, let's say, let's, let's go back to Tekken, for example. You put out a, a Tekken 8 or Tekken Tag 3, whatever you want to call it. And you say, it's free for a month. And then after that, it'll, you know, go, it'll roll back to like, I don't know, $50, wh whatever they're going to charge. But then you already have like this huge player base. And then they say, okay, well, here's monetization options. Here's packs of costume bits. Here's some characters. Like no one has truly tried this with a new fighting game. Exactly. Like, virtual, virtual Fighter is the closest thing, but that's quite an old fighting game. And thank God they, they remade it in uh, the Dragon Engine or whatever, because that did make it look nice and shiny, like comparatively yeah, to the it, old version. It, it, yeah. you, you, if, if it's like, if you just release a, a 15 year old fighting game which virtual fighter 5 is and you're like hey here's this 15 year old fighting game it's free like and that's what uh, it seemed like a lot they were gonna do just re-release like a 1080p slash actual 4k version of final showdown and then here's some costume packs you can buy see you later but there was at least some effort put into it like they redesigned the whole game it, it 99 percent plays identical to what people remember from the final version of like final showdown right so th you need that kind of like that kind of polish there has to be something some reason even if a game is free there needs to be some reason you would want to check this out you know because it, it, if it's just a 15 year old game it's just essentially a 15 year old not as good looking as tech in the sort of game like what if capcom were to go back and get street fighter 4 code and just be let's make a free-to-play version of street fighter 4 just to see and let's re-render it to look a little bit different like justin what if they got a complete makeover for rufus and he looked he's skinny? sweatier no 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 <laughs> like he's sweatier and shinier and has more of a treasure trail like it's more pronounced oh like, the treasure would, trail yes <laughs> would you would you be interested in that rufus would you play that i mean i would play any fighting game that was yeah. put on free-to-play market it, like at least in today's ages in general just because mm. i mean who wouldn't want to try out a new fighting game for free because growing up i mean i bought shack fu and i only played for 20 minutes and that was like a 60 dollar game back in the day too so 
yeah, I don't want to pay for games that I don't want. I'm only going to play for like 20, 30 minutes. Yeah, but like when you're talking about old games and how well someone will say nowadays, like, oh, I don't want to, you know, get Street Fighter Five or the next Street Fighter because like they'll just release better versions or more content later on. It's like, dude, for an entire decade, we had to buy fighting games at full price and then you were just stuck with it forever. You could rarely get any money back on it. So yeah. like we went through that stuff all together collectively. So but people because people's uh attentions are so diverted between every other form of entertainment yep. and fighting games do require this is the tough thing about them if you really want to get the most out of them you do have to play them a whole lot yeah um and even even on the developer end you have to update them a whole lot like people need sure. to be reminded that this game exists in the same way like every other game is doing everything to get your attention fighting games have to do the same thing and that, and and what is fighting games main thing to doing that it's like uh, dangle these carrots these characters like oh my god um what what's a good recent example it was like i was i was kind of done with uh, soul caliber 6 they're like 2b from near near automata oh, yeah all yeah, down <laughs> like the, How the, 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 you know yeah, Halmaru and even um, uh, Samurai Showdown, like Biken. Holy shit! I haven't played Sam Show in 2019, like you know, like a year. Yeah, but I'll I'll, I'll get Biken, and you can do that for hardcore people like like us. But that also always has an appeal for certain characters for a casual audience. Like I don't know if Terry boosted sales for um, uh, Fighting the X Lair. I assume he must have helped a little bit. Fighting Fighting the X Lair is a good example of a game that may should have been free to play from yeah. the from the start. It, especially yeah, I with agree. The, especially with the April's Fool's joke that I, exactly. and, and it's and it I guess steamrolled into a full game. I thought it was going to be free to play as well too, just because of the way it looks and the way it's played. Because yeah. all the all, ultimately in the end, all the characters very played very similar, right? And then I guess what would you sell? characters maybe skins uh the go the different type of gogies it'll be, be kind of like cross tekken again Ooh, uh, that's actually a great <laughs> that's actually a great question is uh as as we kind of move forward into the different scalability of this because i think we could all agree like tekken revolution the idea on paper sounded good right mm -hmm. it sounded good but once you actually execute that in a digital format that the game was released in with crappy netcode and you're essentially just rehashing a lot of assets and the game isn't that much different from Tekken Tag 2. It was just like, no, this is not, this is not okay. No, 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 no. And they tried it with Soul Calibur and it was just, no, this is not, this is not a format that works. Um, yeah. So the, the pay to play format that Tekken Revolution and Soul Calibur kind of did, I don't think flies. So that, let's just say that one doesn't work. But there is some scalability here, you know? Killer Instinct uh, found a pretty decent amount of success as of like 2017. 10 million downloads, it, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it was so flexible, all the options it gave yes. you. Like you could spend zero, you could piecemeal the characters you did want, you can spend $20. $40 or you could spend like on the physical version that had everything like the that was like I think full price it might not have been I, I don't remember now the definitive edition yeah, definitive uh just had more costumes right it, mm. had, it had more costumes and it had extra extra stuff like you get KI classic you know or yeah, KI2 classic it. Uh, yeah. Which is which is nice. You're essentially buying like an extra game for for 20 bucks on top of the premium price but for anybody that doesn't know how KI did it when Justin, what we were explaining it earlier, um, KI essentially had a free rotating character, right? Where it was like Jago, and I think Jago might have always been free. I actually don't know. I worked on the damn game, and I don't know, because this is, this is just a part of the game in a stew of like 3,000 people that are working on this game, and this is just one. This is like a, a few people that are doing this thing. But yeah. the marketing of the game was that it, it did have a like free-to-play element where the rotating character would change, and you would get a new character to play. And when you had that free character, the game was completely free, right? So you could have Saber Wolf, you could do all of his arcade mode. You can go through all the crazy shadow training, all, all, all the combo breaker training, training mode online. The entirety of the package was free, but all the other characters were locked out. So but that cost paid that cash. Exactly. That cost nothing. It caused a lot of confusion, though. Like, I, I can't even tell you. A lot of us know what KI's model is. So we're like, oh, that's great. But the big problem with KI's model is that everyone had the impression that there wasn't just like, well, I'll just take it all. 
there's so many people review bombed the game because they thought you had to buy every single character and the game would cost way more than 60 bucks right mm. so the the issue with ki is that it's um now i don't even know if it's marketing but like the the price distribution uh verbiage like the way they would they communicate that to people wasn't executed great and there were so many options right it was it was actually freaking super convenient like you would you would buy a few characters and if you bought a few characters up to like 20 bucks i think you would essentially unlock everything so it, it was the most convenient pricing ever like we want to get you into the game and it'll, it'll cost you either nothing or a maximum of this much you know uh but people didn't understand that it was weird and and the the communication was also um, not really up to snuff because they were figuring it out as the game was going along. Yeah, because I, I think it was sense. good. The the model was so new at that time, especially attaching it to like a legacy IP that people hadn't seen in years and years, and that probably contributed to that like review bombs. If it was a brand new game, there's no like b bad blood into seeing it be plunked into this new model you don't quite understand yet i just i just want to play i just want the game that i want where is it why is it done like this i don't understand and um yeah i remember seeing a lot of people angry about it and they, it took them a while to get the messaging correct yeah but it, when i look back on it now i'm like that was so good because did that help in getting me into ki as much as i like you know poured like literally hundreds of hours which is dwarfs any other modern fighting game release like in the last 10 years yeah it i i do think going back on it it did help because those six characters at launch like i had all the time in the world to you know, go through those characters, kind of understand how they work because there's so few. And then they scale up to more characters and you build that knowledge base as you go on. And uh, other games don't really do that. I mean, you could kind of say that to Street Fighter V and maybe even Tekken 7, but they still had big, you know, fairly big rosters at the start. And it's just, if, if K was to come back, I, I don't even know what they would do at that point. Would they oh. still do the free to, the, the, the more flexible model where they, they go, okay, screw it. Let's just make a big game now. What do you, what do you feel, Justin? If, if KI came back and it was completely free to play, right? They, they essentially League of Legends model it. Is yeah. that something that seems appealing? I think that's pretty much why they did in the first place in 2013 because of League of Legends just came out as so successful. I just think the one thing is that League of Legends had way more characters for people to just try out for free during the rotation period compared to KI was like once a week, like one character a week because I guess they're limited characters. Uh, but let's say if you took the whole character roster of current KI and maybe make it free to play and six characters are free rotating right give more people a variety of character choices that w i think that would make it more appealing for people and make it more understanding where you don't really have to just pay for like every character where it costs more than like 60 dollars a game yeah because ultimately in the end the more characters you do add it's going to cost more like league of legends if you bought every character in league of legends you're spending like hundreds of dollars probably right and people are okay with it because they're so happy with because it's a full game and you get to you get to try so many different characters different champions so that comes well that's considered i guess for our term we consider that as dlc characters and i mean who doesn't like dlc characters and people would w willingly always spend money on dlc characters it's been a long time since i've i've paid attention to it <clears throat> and i I don't know if leak does the characters are completely free type of thing where if even if there's like new champions and stuff, they they might just be free. We're going to we're going to find out in, in comments and stuff if they are. But I'm, I'm fairly, <laughs> I'm fairly sure uh, that league is just like, oh, yeah, if you want to play anybody in the roster, here you go. But like, obviously, the skins and all the additional like accoutrements that come with monetizing a free to play game. That's the stuff where it costs you money. Yeah, and that's true. That's that's sort of where I think that's honestly where I think KI should go. The 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 issue with this free to play stuff is that I don't know if we've really had a fighting game that uh, outside of one, right? Uh, uh, that we've really had a fighting game that approaches it from the very beginning of development. They're like this is going to be a free to play game. It's going to be a premium, good-looking, high-quality like AAA free to play game. 
um and we're going to monetize people essentially through like the battle pass the season pass like costumes and stuff but every character you want to play our game the playing part is free right the playing people online filling out matchmaking allowing for rookies to fight intermediates or rookies to fight rookies like that kind of thing to actually happen yeah that's that's what free to play allows free to free to play allows people that suck to fight other people that suck because you need that in fighting games and it's tough to do I that. i know i do yeah, everybody uh. does <laughs> everybody needs to needs to grow right yeah. so if you approached like a ki and you're like hey from the very beginning of development we know this is going to be a free to play game we're going to monetize people in the similar way that virtual fighter did here's a bunch of early skins and costumes but our entire roster at the start is going to be what let's just say eight to ten characters and ever expanding but those expansion of characters will be free not street fighter 5 free right <laughs> not like coins and battle pass tickets or whatever the heck you gotta like the fight money or whatever fight money <laughs> no 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 not not fight money like actually like all the other big free-to-play games yeah so I, n nothing's ever actually done that yet except i think brawlhalla mm. yeah okay brawlhalla i need brawlhalla you you mentioned brawlhalla a lot and they they do a great job when it comes down to like i would say adding like uh you know new characters and also guest characters um but what about the guest characters when you have like these collabs and guest characters? I would say for a lot of free to play games, those are the ones that are not free. Yeah. Right. Like I think Fighting X Lair, all the characters were actually, all the DLC characters were actually free except for Terry Bogard. So when you have these guest characters that are considered, you know, free to play and stuff like that, would that, that, that will probably be blocked by like, kind of like maybe like a $5 or $8 for characters. Right. I think those exceptions are okay. Yeah. You know, that, that seems fine to me. There's obviously something different going on. So I don't know. And like uh dead by daylight, for example, all their original characters, like original killers and survivors, they're all in the base package. But if you want all the movie characters like Michael Myers and Freddy and, uh, um, Ghostface from Scream, they're, they they have to be bought. Yeah, like they are all DLC, and that totally makes sense. I mean, they're like, well, there's all these licensing fees, whatever. These characters were expensive to make, and yeah, they're yeah. a lot of work because they have to go back and forth, and they have to be all right. Like, if I would never begrudge any 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 sort of game, uh, fighting game or otherwise, it's a well, you you have to pay for these. I'm like, yeah, no, <laughs> that totally makes sense to me. Sure. Like, uh, you know, um, I was gonna say uh, for. Um, Fighting EX Lair, um, was there? There was was Terry with the only guest character though. Was uh, there another one? Terry was the only like outside of Arika guest character. The, okay, the other characters okay. are like Pullum and Shadow, or and like it was all like Fighting EX Lair characters. Okay, no, they didn't have the shark though. The shark was never added. I wish no. He was sadly <laughs> the shark or the eagle or the the Dark Souls boss was not yeah. added, unfortunately. Oh no! I really wanted uh, Artorius to appear in in in, in Finding X Lair. Um, so I was looking back at Tekken Revolution. Right, this might blow you guys' minds because it certainly blew mine. This is why Namco does not mess with this. Uh, Soul Calibur Lost Swords and Tekken Revolution were like two of the half dozen free to play games that they attempted between 2011 and 2013. There was also Ace Combat Infinity, Mobile Suit Gundam Battle Operation, and Ridge Racer Driftopia. What the none hell? None of which I've heard of, and I assumed were all massive failures. So pretty much, yeah. They were all probably just like pieces of the original games they came from, but just like they remixed into free to play stuff. Yeah. So, but, but, but that's like a company going way too hard on one thing and saying, hey, everyone, free to play, pretty, like, let's take all these fan bases and try to get them on board with this. And, like, I'm assuming these were all maybe the Gundam game did really well in Japan or something, but, like, I never heard of any of these. Yeah. So, yeah. I guess, I guess I would say they probably have just a bad taste when it comes down to free to play games. Um, kind of similar was Capcom. They released a gotcha version or mobile version of Puzzle Fighter. And I played the yeah. crap out of it. A lot of people played it as well in the FGC. But personally, 
it was it's so terrible it, it had such a huge paywall pay to win uh they didn't have any classic modes and you know they had all these cool guest characters like jill was in there as well too but ultimately the game bombed super hard i think it only lasted for like less than a year and they closed yeah. the game down and everything uh because it was just people realized it was just too much pay to win you couldn't even just play the game without having to like try to spend money or the game telling you to spend money and that's that's that that's that stigma right that kicks in the free to play stigma with like the the varying degrees of this could go really wrong or you can do it right you know and yeah. I, I feel the way to to do it right because once something goes bad it leaves an impact right like street fighter 5's launch has left an impact on the casual audience of street fighter fans right people are like you need to give me a reason mother <laughs> Pfeiffer, to, to actually buy this again and Tekken Revolution and Soul Calibur essentially had that impact on Bandai Namco, where they're just like, yeah, even Harada's like, yeah, we did that. It didn't work. It certainly didn't work. It's in the same way that I remember hearing from Capcom um, about like a fighting all-star game. I'm like, well, dude, why don't you guys just make a Capcom all-stars game? Like a fighting game with just Capcom characters. And I was told like, geez, eight years ago, we already did that. And I'm like, oh my god, you're talking about fighting jam, and they're like, yeah, yeah, well, they they already did that. Like the, everyone in Japan, that that was something we tried and it failed horribly, never doing it again type some type thing, you know. And I'm like, wow. So once something goes bad, the stigma of it will yeah. not just affect the audience, but will actually affect development for just decades later, you know. It's yeah, it's crazy because times have changed right i think free-to-play models have evolved to so much where people can like have have a good flow chart of like how to make a or well, try to make a bet a more successful like free-to-play game because those things are a let you're you know you're allowed at this point where you could like king of fires all-stars right they have so much stuff where so much single player content or online content you could do and all these different modes where you could keep playing forever and forever and you know they have all these characters these gotchas uh but when it comes down to it like now it's a much it's a much easier time to understand a flow chart or like kind of like a blueprint on how to make a better free-to-play game compared to what they made tekken revolution 2013 and so caliber lost almost 10 uh, almost 10 years ago yeah so it's kind of like you know back in the day mobile games had that stigma of like you just want our money now more people are so involved with mobile games or more involved in free-to-play games yeah i mean matt how bad how badly would it feel if like a game was just so everything's free just pay it but they essentially battle pass it where it's the specifically staying away from like the pay to win like you're getting this gun and it's godlike and new and different and you're just gonna wait lay waste everybody you could practically think as new characters like guns you know like <laughs> this dlc character this brand new character in a game is just gonna whoop ass which usually happens sometimes but if all that stuff was free, the characters were free, and it's just custom as, uh, it's just monetizing on like skins and colors and effects and all, all all the kind of stuff that you can customize in a fighting game. Does that seem that bad? No, but it also depends on the franchise because I've seen enough people that hate like and, and how modern fighting games are done nowadays where it's like no just sell me the complete game yeah i don't want deals like i'll still see comments on any street fighter videos i've done or like any like any of your videos people are like oh i'm so sick of this like these are people that are just like they don't want to have anything to do with it maybe they're really old school and they're just like no sell me the complete game yeah so if you were to like make street fighter 6 or any like major game and say this is the new one like lots of people are going to still hate that. Um, I, and I think I agree because I, I remember being in the same mentality when I heard about KI not being treated like a real game when it was mm -hmm. like, oh, it's just this side. It, it's not getting a physical release. This is this is very early on. No physical release. It's free to play. I'm like, oh, what have you done to my poor, <laughs> sweet baby? Like and, and, and l you learn later that it's like that was different. But the game was still like relatively as features as it could possibly be at launch and they added more oh, stuff. Yes. So it's yeah. like, oh, OK, so this is this is fine. It's that that bridge, like the jumping. Oh, this is fine. Like sort of bridge is really difficult. And even uh, I keep using Brawlhalla as an example because it's a it's a game that's based on no existing franchises. Right. It's a platform fighter that has a unique art style that is 
decently running online and is like free minus then they monetize things like skins and stuff like that from what i understand granted i haven't actually played the game i'm just getting perspective from everybody that tells me about it but brahalla has like averages of like eight to nine thousand people playing on steam every day it's got more people playing it than any other fighting game uh daily yeah it's up there it's crazy yeah. and it's it's free it's not to Smash's level, but it's pretty close in terms of character crossovers. It's, like every, everyone's in there, essentially. From what I understand, it's bigger than most fighting games that launches. It's also another thing where like Brawlhalla or like any type of arena fighter is just much more easier to understand. Like people just sure. like that type of stuff. And I think there's so many different clone arena fighters now that you see on steam uh that people are just trying to like get into or like more people are just getting involved with i mean look at multiverse right multiverse is is another arena fighter for wb and is that that one's free to play as well yeah i think we'll so that is the first big test right because M multiverse is essentially a, a pretty big developed right there's it's a it's a big wb game with a lot of franchises yeah. Multiverses is about to be possibly the first really big like free to play fighting game where most of the characters are either unlocked or free in the game and you just are going to be monetized through like battle pass kind of situation, right? Where uh, similar to what I'm describing, it's 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 very similar to a lot of the other big like Fortnite, Warzone, uh, PvP online games that will be essentially a smash like where they focus on 2v2 just like brawlhalla it seems like it's taking a ton of steps from brawlhalla yeah. and they're trying to do like a big budget version of that i i think companies get when they have a character that crosses over into something like brawlhalla they'll get a they'll get a sniff a taste of it they're like ooh, what if what if we can finally answer the question who's the toughest character in the universe uh daenerys targaryen or finn the dog or jake the dog right, I should say. <laughs> finn the dog the, we, the finn the dog or and, shaggy. Bat, and bat the man um no uh so when they get when they see that that model can work and Brawlhalla absolutely does work, like Brawlhalla has been around for like I don't even know how long, but like seven years. Like it's been around it's an for indie. a while. It's been, it was an indie game completely at the start. Yeah, it's like small development team. Then Ubisoft bought them and they got a bunch of their characters in there and like Street Fighter characters are in it. Uh, and yeah, WWE's in there too with Xavier Woods. That's the true. New Day. Uh, Asuka is also in there, my girl. Um, so. Did, I, it actually surprises me it took WB this long, the amount of franchises they own. And I'm not going to be surprised if Disney does something similar in the future. Like, they they already have that um, that uh, Disney like uh, kart racing racer. game that was announced. And I think that's supposed to be free to play as well. I think so. Yeah, I think it uh, is. And then Square has that terrible kart racing game that they just put out that is has a real bad model where the core game is like fun, but like it 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 throws it right in your face, up your butt about all the monetization options. Like it's really rough that I've heard people say to me. Um, but like, yeah, Disney and, and doing a Marvel thing. Like there's there's like what three or four Marvel fighting games on mobile that do this type of thing. Um, that are that have all these crazy characters like Venom, uh, Venom, uh, Deadpool, Venom Pool, whatever. All these things that you would die if they were in Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite or a new Marvel vs. Capcom. Nope, mobile only because yeah. that's how you get the casual audience in there. And until multiverses, like Justin mentioned, like and Max as well, like this is the first big test that I think, but ever since Tekken Revolution. Where, like, let's take these characters that lots of people will like. Your Batmans. Your Game of Thrones is really weird because... No, I'm, <laughs> I'm spending it? money on Arya, Thrones, okay? Yeah! I'm spending money on her. <laughs> and, and, I will spend and, money. <laughs> and that's what you mean. Like, from from uh, from the very conception of this project, it felt like the, the free-to-play element is what the game is, right? So they're yeah. designing the whole game around it, potentially, like, unlocks or characters or whatever. And they're trying to... They're trying to do, like, full effort free to play instead of like sort of the killer instinct way of doing it you know where some of it's free to play so instead of the uh, the D doa 5 doa 6 way of doing it which i'm pretty sure each game has like a core fighters that are free and allow people to essentially experience the game with a limited amount of characters i, th I think that's how both those games did it so that's like that's like yeah. shoehorning in 
free to play in some ways. Street Fighter V has been free to play in several ways, like for a few weeks on on PlayStation Network. And even yeah. Virtual Fighter tried to shoehorn it in some way by making it a part of like PS Plus, but still technically free to play. This is different. Like this from it, it almost seems from the very beginning is that uh, is that this game will absolutely be taking the approach of a free to play model and using it going forward. And that's that's different than just like trying it later. So, like, personally, I don't really have a huge interest in multiverses. That is until they confirm Godzilla, because there has <laughs> been a lot of data mining that Godzilla might be in there. WB technically owns American Godzilla. So how would uh, Godzilla you know, work? He's so big. And, I like, don't you know? care, Justin. I don't care. What if it's, just, what if it's not Godzilla, <laughs> but the baby version? Go what's Gojira? Is his name? Uh, uh, Godzuki. Godzuki. Um, <laughs> God, Godzuki or little Godzilla, baby Godzilla. But, you know, Ridley Ridley got into Smash ultimately. You can make it work. They can be like, oh, That's we shrunk true. Godzilla down and so you can fight Batman now. We finally know if Batman, with enough prep time, can defeat Godzilla. Of course it's, he can. It's, of course he can. Yeah, now. Prep, the time, prep time Batman is too strong. I don't like where this conversation is headed. Um, so, um, I, 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 when I keep thinking, going back to all this, it's like, man, Virtual Fighter, man, I can't stop thinking about making that fighting game free for a month. Just doesn't have to be on a service like Game Pass or whatever, but maybe it could, you know, just make the game free for a month, see how it goes. And then like, you know, just, just let people pay like $20 or, or whatever value that you're offering. Cause the more I thought about it, I was like, that is a cool way. And when you said 8 million, I was like, well then that worked. Yeah, it worked. How, how else were you going to have 8 million people download the a hardest virtual fighter, game. virtual fighter to get into? And they have to, know? and they have to have PS plus too. Right. So that's a lot. They do technically it wasn't free you exactly. did have to be playing for playstation plus so and but and uh, to me it's sort of like and this is where like the future we have to start talking about the future like what games in the future would this make sense for and virtual fighter the, the, the once again the round table sega talking about free to play like this all makes sense because sega is one of the only big japanese game developers of like the big console like japanese game developers um, outside of their mobile divisions, right, that have really gone into the free-to-play market and had a lot of success with a little game called Fantasy Star Online 2. True. Yeah. And New Genesis is still up in up in the air, but PSO2 was insanely successful for Sega, and it was free-to-play for, like, the past, since 2012 or 2013 or something like that. You can play the game completely for free. So they've already had, like, an idea that this could this works, right? We, we used one of our flagship online games and made it free and we made a shit ton of money. And I don't, to me, it's like PSO2 did sort of the thing that I'm asking for where it's like, yeah, all the gameplay parts of it, but you get all these extra customizations and skins and all this kind of stuff. And that's what costs money. The battle pass that has all these new like weapons, but they're like weapon skins. They, they essentially allow you to still play the game, but just make your character look really cool. I'm like, that's how you do it. That's, that's how you do it. The only issue there, though, is like RPGs generally non-competitive unless, you know, MMO, PvP or, or whatever. So someone can be like, oh, I can just level myself until, you know, I'm tough or, or whatever. But fighting games, it still runs into the thing of like, you know, uh, uh, button inputs and do, doing moves. There's still that contingent of people that just like, I don't. You know, I, I need something else. Like, there's also the there's the money barrier of entry. Then there's just the execution level. And uh, Justin mentioned it earlier, but it's like, and and it's obviously it, it's living on in something else. But Rising Thunder, I was so excited for initially because I was like, this is it. This is what's going to get everyone into. My only issue with Rising Thunder at that time is that. To me, these characters, these robots look a little on the generic side. They're, yeah. I'm not getting a whole bunch of personality. The only thing I was going to say in my head to fix this is like, these are gigantic mechas and there's pilots that are also in the game. Yeah. That gives <laughs> yeah. a little bit more personality and leeway to them. But that was my only concern about Rising Thunder because I was like, oh, this plays great. I can totally see what they're doing. Uh, it runs super well. It's got these people working on Oh, that, that, that's so awesome. I had the exact same that, feeling. But the personality yeah, uh, wasn't about, there. Yeah, like the characters had cool moves and stuff, but when you say everyone's a robot, it's hard to, you have to have distinct designs. Like 
even going back to like One Must Fall 2097, those are boxy, basic ass robots, but they had all these anime pilots. Yeah. So that was kind of neat, but I'm really glad that at least Rising Thunder is living on in something that has something that made Max go, should I be in, into League of Legends? Look <laughs> at all these characters. They're so cool. It's crazy I mean, how you make it a tag game and I just go... That really? too, yeah. It's a really? lot of, yeah. I mean, it's a lot of characters, and they League of Legends continue to make more characters. So, man, Project L could be one of the biggest character rosters of all time if they released every character into a fighting game. Well, Project L, I mean, their uh, Project L is most likely going to start with like eight to ten characters. Um, but I, uh, I think in, in this actually came up in the roundtable as well. They started talking about Project L. Where really? a lot of the Japanese devs are paying attention to that game because they they feel that will also be free to play and they're sort of gauging the success of that. That's that competition was, right there. That was a part yeah. of the conversation. Yeah, That's but awesome. it's, it's just not fair though, right? Because anything that Riot makes, you instantly have so many people playing like Riot games just because all of like everyone's like favorite Riot content creators will also play that game. Right. Mm -hmm, so sure. if you if you had Pokimane play Street Fighter Six, right, more people would play Street Fighter Six, at least in the beginning, or try the game out. But if Pokimane played Project L, everyone's gonna want to try to jump on Project L. Yeah. I, the league has this baked in group like that and fighting games unfortunately don't have like yeah there's 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 big stars there's two of them right here on either side of me uh that can that can tell people like oh this fighting game is really cool but um like league is league is in another league of its own <laughs> of having these huge content creators that have massive influence like everything that they've put out like riot has some weird like you know politics on how they conduct business and you know stuff with their workers and stuff that they still need to iron out uh, yep. a lot of people don't talk about it anymore but like the actual content like they put out that league show on netflix it's got something like 99 percent approval rating it's it's a great show through the it's a great it's show, a great yeah. show. Yeah. and like they they put out music videos for their characters and that's like a huge so this fighting game project l like regardless it's probably gonna be really really big and the model is probably going to be like a big reason for that and like it really excites me max that you mentioned that japanese uh game developers are looking at it because not only is the model really interesting like look at their visual style as well please sure. Arxis. Yeah, yeah, creating creating a creating a a compatible slash um uh interesting visual style that will scale to a potato, you know, that you can in the same way that Arc System Works games do this too. Like you can run those games on potatoes. It's the art style that carries the game that makes yeah. it and it's the most fighting games, that's the same case. Like I think Mortal Kombat is technically the one that really pushes visuals to try to make the game look next gen and amazing. But Really, and even it. then, there's a shitty Switch version of that. <laughs> you know what? That's right. Yeah, like that. That's the thing. Like the the visuals of the game need to be scalable to allow for the most people to play it on any kind of hardware. And I yeah. think that's exactly what they're doing with with Project L. They're making it very scalable. But no, I truly feel that, and it seems like the Japanese devs are, are waiting for that game to come out and gauge its, its success because the impression is that Project L is going to be a free to play game, similar to how like all of Riot's games. Or I think for the most part, I think Valorant's free to free to play as well. I haven't tried yeah. it. Yeah, I think um, they're all free. It's okay. and that's the way they that's the way to distribute, right? And it was taken into account most likely at the very beginning of development that this is going to be a fighting game. Is it going to be tag team? Whatever we don't know, but we do know it's going to be free to play. You know, that was probably that was probably point number one in development. And it's it's really fascinating to me when I think like you know I, I have not really played any Riot games for any you know, a uh, large amount of time, but it's so similar to fighting games and like, let's design these crazy appealing characters. This girl with shark missiles, like a uh, hot blonde with crystal fox hot tails. Ball, crystal fox tails. <laughs> like it's so fighting game esque. And that like, here is the content. Here are these awesome looking characters. Like if you, whatever you need to get off to, we got it. Like <laughs> it, 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 it's this rainbow of, of appealingness and fighting games have that essentially like you look at um uh, all of capcom's street fighter characters like all of uh, snk's characters there's there's someone for everyone here and it's it's interesting that like the again to me that the japanese uh, game developers are looking at uh, this because 
you know, Mai or Chun-Li or Ken or hell, even Luke, as new as he is, like you put that in the right setting, a free-to-play model that everyone can kind of get behind or most casual people can get behind. Like, these characters can be bigger than they ever were. I just watched a video today of KOF All-Stars of both versions of Chun-Li, like classic Chun-Li and Alpha Chun-Li. I'm like, oh, she looks so amazing. She has that cool, like that, that, um, uh, Teppan style art where yeah. it's just a picture yeah. of her, but it's animated. With, I'm like, sometimes I look at, at, at modern Capcom characters. I'm just like, oh, these characters can be even bigger because they're so appealing on a base level to like you or I, but even casual people and me like look at Chun-Li and like, look how awesome, awesome she is. I have a four year old niece. She saw Chun-Li for the first time. Now she just screams Chun-Li because <laughs> she loves her so much. The, and <clears throat> it, it I, I don't think Capcom will ever make a street fighter six or seven or anything like be a free to play version like the one that we're talking about but they could try like a tekken revolution where they go well here's another street fighter product that's played this way and see how it goes you know yeah even their mobile games that they released for street fighter 4 that that had a paywall for you to buy the game it wasn't like free free at all but i feel like you're right, uh, Matt, where like Ryu and Chung Li, at least Ryu and Chung Li, they're at this point where they're in so many franchises, so many brands. Mm. They're everywhere, right? They're making Capcom money when it comes to just getting these IP rights. They're in Fortnite, right? So the fact, so Max, these characters did you know they're can in live Fortnite? there. Ryu with a shotgun. Did- I forgot. They, you know, they, you know, just- <laughs> this is, this is off topic, but they totally <laughs> ruined. They could have added Sagat with a shotgun, right? You know how that meme in Street Fighter, that Street Fighter, the USA show with the shotgun? It's the best! They, they could have had Sagat in Fortnite, and they, they missed the meme. They missed it. But other than that, I don't see... I see Ryu and chung Li in more future products or future brands, future games, uh, future just, like, clothing or whatever. They're going to keep doing... The Capcom's going to keep using those two. And, yeah, I mean, I do think Ryu and chung Li are at that point where a lot of people do recognize these characters now, even if, if even if you're in an older generation or, a, or of a newer generation. Yeah. But it's like, will they actually pull, like, you know, pull the trigger on making these characters be in their own dedicated game and letting casual people just be like, oh, I can just play this for free. It's like for for Capcom and and maybe even Namco still, it's like I don't I don't see Bob uh, Nether Realm for sure as well. Like they'll they'll be happy to have uh, Scorpion and Sub Zero multiverses, but that's it. Yeah. And I think multiverses might be WB's obviously their their big jump into the water to like give this a shot because it's outside of Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat franchises and characters uh make sense in there. It's like Scorpion and Sub or Jax or some Somebody gets tossed amongst uh, in uh, fighting Gandalf or whatever. Yeah. Like that's that's a crazy crossover that seems like it might be fun to try out. Um, it, especially if the game costs nothing, right? If you just download the client and just start playing online. I, I think the other part of the conversation is like what does what does free to play offer, right? And you have to think of it on the dev end. F- if you have a game that's free to play and there's no uh, premium purchase I, by the way i still think there should be a, a premium purchase for a lot of these fighting games there should just be a way to like buy things outright you have the story you have the I characters agree. right yeah. I, I think i think that makes a lot of sense but the idea behind like a season pass model and ever continual games as a service sort of like updating over time adding characters over time whether they're free or whatever is 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 it is an expensive endeavor uh for the devs but the return is also there if people are into the game like street fighter 5 and almost all fighting games do it like a new season of content is like <laughs> it's funny like people are like i don't want to play a free-to-play game they're going to charge me more than 60 dollars over time <laughs> and i'm like dude if you bought all the dragon ball fighters content at launch you got charged like 170 dollars or something like that like it was it was like 150 bucks and it's the same thing for like tekken like and and even street fighter for the most part like if you bought all of those things as they were coming out you you spent well over a hundred dollars for oh, the whole roster mean, of characters chung Li's skin alone is 200 bucks all of them so yeah you're spending way more oh, yeah. yeah so yeah, like but that's worth it though it's worth it. It's Chung- worth it. That's true. <laughs> Chung Lee with the Jennifer Lopez outfit. You know, that that one's worth it for sure. And people are funny that they complain about it. And they're like, dude, like, dude, they've been doing this to you since literally the old meme of super turbo hyper generational alpha remix. Like they've been doing this <laughs> since the 90s where they want you to essentially 
keep playing to play the same game, just slightly different. So to me, it, it, like, then just commit to it, you know? Just commit to like a battle pass thing that happens every month or two. Commit to like customization or, or costumes that you can, you can buy for your characters, but just make the core experience absolutely free. Make, make the, and yeah. how, how does that help? It allows in the long run, the developers to keep continually making money and, and monetizing in ways that, that makes sense. If people like the game, they'll, and this is another funny point. People always hate this free to play stuff unless you like it. Ooh, okay. Right. Yeah, that's true. As, as soon as soon as you like something, you're like, oh, okay. I mean, sure. There might be some boundaries there, but if they keep continually adding stuff to a game and, and it's like cool accessories and costumes, you're probably going to buy it, right? You're probably going to spend like five bucks or something like that to grab that. What did I just say about multiverses? Like, I don't really have an interest in it until Godzilla's in it, and then I like it. <laughs> until you like, like it. it. Until there's something in there that makes you like it. And that's the kind of mm -hmm. the idea with a free-to-play model is that you'll have a big expansive roster of characters. Like, eventually, you know, if Virtual Fighter uh, 6 was free-to-play and it started with all Virtual Fighter characters, and then next up is Jin Kazama, and now he's like a guest character, and it's like, whoa, what the hell is going on? Like, or Ryu is now in Virtual Fighter. Like, you start to like, dang, I want to try that out, right? Because now it has something you like so you might actually try out the character if not buy a costume and that that to me is like completely fine because it allows you to i just want to check out the thing right i just want to jump in and spend six bucks and just see the thing and to get the rest of the game and try it out and at that point you you might have just monetized way less than what the full price of the game is and don't have to commit to the full price yeah so yeah. with what you said right there actually makes 100 percent sense because Anytime I see a fighting game collab for this random mobile gotcha game, I instantly download it. I instantly <laughs> try to get the character for free by like pulling or whatever, or they, or you know, like they offer you the free the free default character or the free weak character version. Uh, so yeah, I mean, Puzzle and Dragons. I had the, the street when they did Street Fighter Five. I 100% re-downloaded it just because I want to try out and see their specials and supers and everything. Sure. So it's 100% like if that happened to like a fighting game as well, I most people will definitely jump on just because it's like, oh, my favorite guest character or one of my favorite guest characters in this game that I didn't really care about. <laughs> now I do care about it. Like Godzilla. You mentioned something interesting, like the gotcha element. That's usually a big part of like free to play things. I'm not saying I want that. I don't. I don't want like loot boxes and stuff like that. I specifically don't want that. Like I want to know what I'm getting. That's yeah, a part of, of like the degrees of a free to play model that I'm just like, if you put that into a fighting game, I'm like, I don't know. Uh, uh. I'd be fine with that if it's like more accoutrements and extra things, but not characters. For a fighting game, I would not want characters. Oh, for sure. Hell, I was I was playing uh, Battle Stadium Don. That's the One Piece versus DBZ versus um uh naruto like yeah. game that was on the ps2 and gamecube that has a gotcha system for all the characters you cannot get trunks without pulling a, oh a slot machine <laughs> and and you had to uh, go through the single player mode get coins and then just pull and i tried it like twice i got zilch yeah. and i'm like and this was on the ps2 and holy shit was it aggravating wasn't spending real money but i was spending my time yeah, your time and i was just give me trunks and like you know i i would never want any fighting game like a, an established franchise that we all know to go that route for a, a fighting game because the characters are the content like i know stuff yeah, like no. genshin impact is is successful no. but i i it's not worth it no for I, a fighting I, game franchise I, I, to do I, that. I don't think things like that and i completely agree with you that that is that is a degree that i'm not willing to go down which is why i think like the loot box method is a little weird uh, I, I keep thinking of battle pass stuff, right? Where it's yeah. like you have ten levels of a battle pass, and maybe if you if you played the game even offline, you could you could progress that battle pass to get these unlocks and stuff that are just like, hey, like every few months here's a new battle pass. This stuff is free technically, right? All these little things for characters and stuff like that that you can get. You just have to play our game to get it. But there's like this premium battle pass that has this really cool stuff that is additional that might be like fifteen to twenty bucks or something, and that's like, oh wow, I'm, uh, look at all that cool stuff up there that i can get like essentially what like a lot of modern day free-to-play games do um 
and that helps out a lot because it fixes a lot of issues that fighting games have it it fixes the issues of like once again rookie players wanting to play online right it fixes the issues of like filling out the matchmaking especially at lower levels of people just like grinding their battle pass and just want to play but you're you're unlocking and getting stuff right you have a goal you can either do it or not do it but you're going to miss out on those items because they're they might not come back for quite some time or something like that until like an event so the fighting games have that problem where there's already the biggest barrier of entry there's like a 40 to 50 to 60 dollar barrier of entry for new players to jump in and just get their ass beat yeah you know yeah. and it's like that and that for you I, I really have to start and for the last like 10 years of making content i have really taken myself out of the competitive sphere where my brain was for like 15 years of my life and try to look at fighting games from the approach of like the 99 percent of people that actually play them that just like cool characters or are learning and enjoy the learning process to get to the point where they're comfortable and and like like the game and this is a big problem that fighting games have after the first month of them being out is that People just peace out and you're essentially left with like your new audience that's either pretty good at the game the existing audience that is crazy good with the game and that's about it but if it's free to play and there's new content in the game you're essentially populating mm -hmm. the online matchmaking you're populating all these people that are going to be jumping in and trying this stuff at the start uh even more so if there was like a dlc character right and no there's much more people coming on there's new content for a fighting game of course there's going to be new players but if it's free like if it costs nothing and that stuff is happening it's endless yeah it's it you're always going to have competition w what <clears throat> game what game has done this brawlhalla like brawlhalla <laughs> has like nine thousand people brawlhalla. playing at any time dude like holy shit like that is so many players for a fighting game that it's ridiculous you're always going to get matched up with somebody that is either just as good or right around your skill level yeah so yeah you 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 you, uh, you bring that up and it's like i'm pretty sure you get this all the time in your chat or comments is that um you'll be like so somebody from the comments or chat will ask you so do i buy this game or what do you think it's worth the money right and that's like the one thing that's like super hard to answer them because i don't want to tell them yeah you should buy the game because it's such an amazing game and you have fun because i don't know if you're gonna have fun with it or not sure like i would say from my perspective like i'm having so much fun with king of fighters 15 right but so many people always ask me do you think i should get king of fighters 15 and it's like you know i tell them it's the easiest king of fighters for you to learn compared to everything else it's got the best um, online right it has the best online so i'm giving them all these reasons on why like this is what you can have when you buy the game but ultimately in the end it really deter it really comes down to if you want to play the game or learn the game or or you're comfortable with just taking these l's right because that's what it comes down to with like oh, learning yeah. a new fighting game or especially if you're a new fighting game player that you're spending 40 to 60 dollars to get your ass beat but yes it, but you're gonna get pissed off but if it's free you'll still get mad but you won't be pissed off that you lost 40 to 60 dollars and if it's free you have to also think that there's a ton of other people that feel the exact same way that like oh well it's free i'm not committing anything right i, I yeah. might jump in online and get my ass beat but the chance that you're getting somebody else that is like well i might just jump online and get my ass beat oh there's a match right mm. bam new player versus new player that's the easiest match ever right so that doesn't happen all the time with premium price fighting games Right. You're going to get the influx of players in the first few weeks, first month, first two months. And that's about it until there's DLC. And the DLC will only be an influx of so many new players. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned uh, what's how, how do you like recommend people to play fighting games and stuff like that? Like, what are the easy ones? I'll tell you the easiest recommendation I have ever given anybody ever. And I told people, like, even if you don't give a shit, just go try it was Virtual Fighter. I was I was immediately if you own a PlayStation 4, which you all do, just <laughs> go download this thing. Just go try it, because this is like Sega testing the grounds of people to enjoy VF. And and it's nothing. It costs it costs you megabytes in download space, man. That's literally it. It costs you hard drive space. Just go download it. Yeah. And people showed up. KI is another one that I've recommended to like three or four people that were like, yeah, I like fighting games. But, and I said, well, 
it's on Xbox One. It's on PC. You you can just get the free version, try out a character, hit hit some buttons, see how you feel. And I think at least one of them, uh, Steve Bowling from uh, Good Vibes Gaming, he was like, "Oh yeah, like uh, l- let's let's do some matches. That I'm excited because I was I was trying out Jago and I I was doing some cool things and I was like, okay, cool, let's let's play a session. We had a really fun time and. Virtual Fighter is another good one, especially if I mean, especially at launch, at least when when it was free, because I, I forget who, who I was talking to, but I was like, oh, yeah, my friend Rocky, I was just like, hey, you know, if it's been a long time since you played Virtual Fighter, it's free technically on PlayStation 4 right now. And he's like, oh, shit, it's been a long time since I played Virtual Fighter. Is this yeah. a new one? And I'm like, I didn't go into the whole explanation. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah it's, 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 a, it's a new one. Yep. And um it, you can get people, you can get friends that don't haven't played like a, a modern fighting game like in a while to just say, well, it's free. We can just play around and for a little bit. There's a small chance that, you know, that friend uh, of those friends of yours, the dude that played KI might have just bought like the definitive version of the game for like 10, 20 bucks. Might have just, I think I think he did get the twenty dollar version eventually. Go. Yeah, I, that, I think so. they eventually made the jump. Why? Because there was an opportune moment to try out the game that they would never have done before if they had to pay the premium first. Right? They got to experience what the game is and have like, oh yeah, this is cool. Yeah, I'd like to. I'd like more of this. I'd like the rest of the cast. The same with VF, where it's like that friend of yours could have could have or could have not have bought potentially the classic goofy virtual fighter costumes or some extra accessories to characters they would they would have gone to customize and realize like oh the game's free but oh i can do all this i can put all this cool stuff with the character i'll just buy the customization pack for 15 bucks or whatnot you know yeah like that's that there you go you've you've now you've gotten people past the 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 huge paywall door that is fighting games because if someone, one of those friends said to me like, oh yeah, I haven't played anything, you know, consistently since Street Fighter 4. Should I buy this game, uh, Guilty Gear Strive? And I'd be like, <laughs> hey, I, uh, have you played other Guilty Gear games? No, never. Um, uh, Like I would recommend like virtual, you know, if it was free nowadays, I, I would recommend virtual fire or killer instant. Like if you want to play a fighting game again, maybe try these. And if you really like them, then maybe look at more at, at guilty gear again. Uh, if you're into KI or you're into this now and, but you know, it's not free obviously. So you can't try. That's why like when the uh, DNF uh, beta came out, like I was excited to play it and I did like what I played of it, but my, my beef with that game, I, I talked about this on Twitter at the time. It's like, God damn, I wish that had a tutorial yeah. or a training mode. Yeah. I really just wanted to hit buttons because even in that free demo, like I didn't learn anything. Yeah, because you cause just play online. It, you can just play online and that's not going to be an issue yeah, when not. the full game launches. But I would have been much more excited if I could have taken Grappler and just been able to, to pound buttons against the CPU or whatever. But, uh, you know, that's that's not I can just imagine you apply those same lessons to a full game like here. Uh, my friend that doesn't play fighting games, let's play DNF. It's really simple, but, you know, it's going to cost something. DNF isn't doesn't have any free to play elements that's going to be a full price game yeah uh I, yeah i mean i, th- I think most, so most, most likely. likely it's got like a physical version that's coming out oh, okay so i yeah i think the bigger question for for dnf is that is it going to have like a dfo mode <laughs> is it going to have uh Ooh. outside of the fighting mode is it going to have like a like a like a, a, beat, a like a tech and force like, like yeah, exactly story like, mode. A, like a co-op sort of thing where you can run around with like a friend that's also using a character and beating up you know a bunch of enemies and giant custom combos and stuff like that That'd i mean awesome. that's, that's what i'm hoping i'm hoping the game eventually gets that yeah, like even like like way post launch, like down the line, yeah. sort of thing. That'd be a cool. It makes have. sense because that's kind of where the game came from. Uh, but yeah. in terms of like free to play, it's probably going to be a, f- a full price game. Uh, most likely, just in general, yeah, most likely. Uh, but yeah, I don't think there's much information about it besides recently they, yeah, you could you could pre order on Amazon now. I think I saw a tweet about it earlier today, um, and there's more different characters. I think there's some spoilers on Amazon as well too. Uh, but in general, yeah, you could just get the game now or like pre-order the game now. Yeah. Cause I'm super excited for that game. The little bit I got to play of it. I was like, Oh, this feels really good. All these characters look super sick. Yeah. I've seen some of these characters before an actual dungeon fighter online, but it, I, I'm sure this happens to you guys. You see a cool character in another genre or whatever. And then they're like, 
but what if they're in a fighting game yes. and you lose <laughs> yes. your mind? What if yes. Ezio Auditore is in a fighting game? And you're like, oh my god! You, you know, what it, if just... Link from Soul Calibur is in a fighting game? Oh, Link, I'm sorry, Link <laughs> from Zelda is in a fighting game. <laughs> Link from Soul Calibur is in a <laughs> Zelda game. Um, it, it, that that magic is always there. And again, if you even if you put it in a model that you're not used to, maybe you don't necessarily like be it free to play or like a more of a piecemeal thing or, or whatever it just you just need the right character yeah. and like you'll get people to be excited you need like you need the right character the a right model of of monetization that allows people multiple options allows people to not feel like they're being directly ripped off because so much perspective of what free to play is is coming from companies where it's like do you really quote unquote do you really trust capcom to give us a fair free to play pricing structure like a lot of a lot of people have this impression and it's like that's not what i'm thinking of like i'm i want a free to play fighting game that is like continually updated where everyone that wants to play the game it's completely free there is no pay to win mechanics there's no boosting my throw teching there's none none of that goofy gem horse shit like no the, the core gameplay experience is just completely free and it's the same thing that everybody's playing but some people will get either different stages some people yeah. will get like a bunch of things that can be monetized to make it free i keep telling this i've told people this so many times like I would pay actual money to change the color of a fireball. Like, Ooh, let yeah. me just change the color of a fireball to pink or something like that. Like, like what, whatever one you release it. I don't want a slider. Just like, give me a different kind of make it look like a dragon or some shit like that. That'd be cool. What if you could change the elemental effect on your DP? It could be fire or, or electric ice or electric. Ice. Ice. Yeah. Or yeah. yeah. It, we, we're not saying that it's going to like freeze someone like Gil or whatever. No, you just want to like, get animation. Like, Yes. Exactly. What couldn't you? Wasn't it in, in a Tekken game or something where you could change the hit spark effects? That, that is Tekken crazy? Seven. Yeah. That was Tekken Seven. Okay, yeah. I wasn't sure. So that that's like the hit sparks do, and things. That. that that's the kind of stuff that I feel like you can monetize on, and that's the that's the stuff in a free to play model that would be like fun in in the same way that it's like when you shoot your gun in funny shooter uh, war, uh, battle royale game, little confetti things come out, right? Oh, that's goofy and 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 wacky. Ha <laughs> ha! I'm having fun. It makes a funny noise. I, I think there's things like that that can be done for fighting games that are like not super annoying and like stupid and goofy and like interrupting, but can allow for a cool amount of customization that can actually yeah. allow people to want to invest in like a season pass because, oh, man, I could change fireball colors to to like purple. That's or pretty like cool. This battle pass lets you do dumb Omega mode shit, probably not online, but like uh, here's this little thing that you can buy and it just makes, yeah, you for know, non-ranked. Non yeah, yeah non-ranked. Cool. Exactly. Like an EX like, groove, like how like Xbox had it back in the day for CVS 2. Yeah. Or easy, easy operation mode. Suddenly your control stick just like throws out every single super you want. Yeah. yeah. That'd be awesome. I'd, lo I'd love easy operation. There, I, I think there is a, a wide variety of ways that it can go completely sour and can be really cool and will eventually, in my opinion, in the next like five years, I think it, uh, by the time we reach 2025 and we're all making content, if not podcasting or whatnot, I think there will have been releases of a couple fighting games that are actually relatively bigger budget, relatively big studios behind them that are free to play that will do this right. And it will start getting attention of the even bigger devs that have bigger franchises and stuff like that. I, I think I think the industry will actually be, at least on the starting process, being a lot different in a few years from now because yeah. things like Project L might might find that success. If not, other fighting games might try to dip their toes into it because even though not everybody's paying attention, there have been several games that have been free to play fighting games that have done it right and they are reaping the rewards. Yeah, I think 2013 was probably too early to start it, given online infrastructure on consoles, like just, you know, uh, hardware itself limiting it, you know, PlayStation 3s, what have you. But like, I think that's a really realistic time frame that you, you just said. Like, I, I'd imagine as well something, maybe not multiverses, but something at least from Namco or Sega that would take advantage of this. Like maybe Virtua Fighter 6, who knows? Oh, like, yeah, I think VF6 is the game. Oh yeah, mm, that'd be cool. Yeah, I mean they 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 already done so much with VF5 and VF4. 
with customizations and they did a great job and they got the data i don't, I don't see why not they wouldn't push to this method yeah i think there's yeah. a good reason why that why that topic of conversation came up at the beginning of the round table but also omega rugel i mean he's oh, yeah. free yeah that's cool <laughs> and he's free that's a free mode <laughs> he's actually free so the, I, I, when I saw the roadmap for KOF 15 for the DLC, they're like, oh, uh, new team here, new team here. And I did notice, but I didn't think about it much at the time. I was like, well, they're missing a month there. Like there's a month gap between when DLC and I was like, oh, huh. And then I didn't think about it. And then when if that's what they're actually going to do, have a free bit of content, like I'm like, always that's that's always super smart to me. Here's a thing you got to pay for. Here's a cool uh, extra thing. Yeah. Um, uh, Predator Hunting Grounds did that where it was like paid DLC this month, free DLC the next month yeah. and go back and forth. And if it's going to be like a different KOF boss added to that mode that'd be in so between, cool. yeah. that'd be so dope. Max can make content for the rest of his life with <laughs> boss my rages. Life. I've been doing this <laughs> boss stuff for nearly a decade. And then Rugal and, comes back, bro. <laughs> and I even think in the previous KOF cast we were talking about, I was like, I'd be willing to pay for that. Like this, all this stuff that was free, yeah. I'm like, I would, I would actually pay real money to give me the, the crazy CPU hell mode boss, right? Like a true test of time type stuff, but it's free. The, the nightmare AI, what is it? The hell computer? Yeah, the, 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 the CPU <laughs> from hell is what they described it as. I'm excited because I think they said in order for you to get Rugal, you actually have to beat Rugal to get yeah. the free. No, I, I think, no, the character's good. free. Uh, you do you, you get Omega Rugal, but okay. it's a uh, a costume, a stage, and something else. You oh, actually okay, get his okay, big okay. old Music. shoulder pad, insane looking version, which is like the boss version. You can actually yeah. get that as a skin. Oh, nice! So they already okay, yeah. So that they're pushing, they're definitely going to be pushing more skins, and I mean, I do think they're going to probably come out with more like different type of skins for monetization for yeah. sure and and I, I think that's awesome i think like damn you want to release a boss character to people and you can get the boss's stage and his and his skin on on your character and stuff like that and you actually get things that other people might not have and you can show it that that's how you do it yeah <laughs> that is certainly how you do it they already do that with uh with the team garo release like if you want to get like like their garo's music you have to fight team garo in, in arcade mode really yeah so that's that, that. yeah that's what uh, a lot of people are telling me so i need to i need to still do that because i need my jukebox you know that's and the what, most important part what was some of the most fun stuff they did in uh street fighter 5's uh history was like the crazy nash battle the, yeah, the crazy shadow lady shadow lady chun Lee. that stuff was awesome man i was like this is really cool yeah they, they could probably add more bosses obviously because they, they you know they have the lore they have dark sakura if, if they wanted to just because you know she was part of a marvel game uh since shadow and shadow lady was actually part of the versus series and not really part of street fighter um so i think having that them as coming out as bosses or even having them as skins they could do that i mean street fighter 5 skins they're gonna keep coming out with skins you you see like the bison seth and akira so i don't see you know you know you're gonna have to do more rate rate the costumes you know this year for Woof. sure <laughs> Woof. I don't. That's, I, I like. I already said. Like I, I, I can't even. I'm, I'm think about going through all those costumes now. That they're still gonna. Uh, I mean, that is the last bit of content, right? All this uh, pe uh, people reminded me on Twitter. It's like no, all this content was supposed to come out last year, and it got delayed. Like Luke, they just made Luke a separate release, and all this other rebalanced stuff. The definitive uh, version of Street Fighter Five that was all like push to 2022 and that's what we're seeing right now right like is there anything that was scheduled on a roadmap for street fighter 5 after this stuff Did uh no this saw? is the i think the reason this stuff is coming out now is because in three months they don't want you to be thinking about street fighter 5 anymore Fire 5 okay. yeah <laughs> yeah because there's still i think <laughs> there there's probably gonna still be more stuff like there's still like uh patch notes they haven't released yet um I feel like Luke hasn't had another costume. You know, he, you probably got to give Luke another costume if he's the future of Street Fighter Six. So yeah, there's gonna be more stuff. I think. Can we get a Can we get a, a DLC where we can take all of Luke's star tattoos off? That would be <laughs> nice. 
It's 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 too visually distracting for even in the art for uh, KOF All Stars. I see him with like his one uh, fist outstretched. He has all these stars. I'm like they look so dumb. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's it's a weird situation where Street Fighter Six Luke looks way better than Street Fighter Five. Yeah, yeah no, that's true. I, I I agree there. Um, I guess did, did we talk about all the free to play? I think we did. I think we beat them. We 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 talked about the big ones that have that have sort of impacted fighting games. There might be some small stuff that has released over the few years, but the ones that uh, I, I think at least like jumped in and did some something relatively big. Um, for example, like uh, Justin, wasn't Serlin's game? Uh, Fantasy, oh, Strike. Fantasy Strike oh. eventually became free to play and stuff like that. I don't, I don't know the varying degrees of success. I fight, I tried Fantasy Strike a couple of times and it just wasn't really for me. This isn't a bad game. It's just not really for me. Um, but I think those eventually got free to play models. Yeah. So I also am the same boat. Like I played it like probably at like a convention or a tournament, but it was it really wasn't for me. But I had my a roommate who loved playing Fantasy Strike. And pretty much it's free to play. Um, if you want the characters, you obviously have to buy them. And what was very interesting is that when you're playing online, I guess this is how they get you, is uh, you have to win a two out of three set, but you can't win with the same character. So you actually have to have three characters. You have to learn three characters and you have to win with two out of three. What? Then what? what? Yeah, so like if there's if let's say if there's Ryu Kenakuma, right? I don't know the character's name. You can't win a two out of three set with Ryu. You have you can only win one set with Ryu, and then you have to win the next game Kenakuma to win the actual match. That's so how that, the free to play works. That's how the Fantasy Strike, I would say, online works. So I, because I was like I, talking to my friend, I'm like, so you telling me I can't win with the same character? I I just have to learn three characters pretty much to win the set. And that's and that's how tournaments are run as well in Fantasy Strike when they do online <sighs> tournaments. So it seems like if you want to play this game for free, you probably have to maybe purchase more than two characters. Oh, I have, oh. that sounds really weird to me. Yeah, and that's I'm, what that's, that's what gonna, online is. <laughs> I'm just gonna go. All right, then <laughs> you do you, man. That's so bizarre. Like, so you ha- you're encouraged to spend money to win matches. Yeah, that's, I, 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 it's like it's it's like let's say if you didn't buy any characters, I guess they have the character rotation. Um, so if you have if you didn't pay, pay any money, you wouldn't have let's say your possible best character um, in the next week. So you might have to like purchase that character to keep that character on the roster, so you can keep I guess ranking up online. That's true. That's a weird ass model. I guess that's the reason why I haven't heard fan- the words Fantasy Strike set until today for like <laughs> the last year because I never I did hear about going free to play but I never heard about these like you have to fill out tax forms to fill win a match tax- now <laughs> like you got send you the W the W nines real fast <laughs> so if if we were to like wrap up our free to play topic and we were to sort of predict the Ugh. future. What is a future fighting game that could or maybe even could not exist that you would choose to be the like your free to play game like Dark that? Soccer's Dark Oh okay I I think realistically for Capcom to go okay Let's make a new Darkstalkers. But we're so scared of making a new Darkstalkers because we just don't think the people are there. Make it like ha- like just Morgan and Felicia all over it. And, you know, maybe a few other characters in the background, but they're in front and center. And you make that free to play. You have all the customization options. You have all these crazy costumes like just Morgan herself. She'll be the Chun-Li. She'll have 20 costumes or whatever. And I, I'd say because, yeah, do I want Darkstalkers back? For sure. Do I think Capcom will bring it back without some type of caveat? N- no. So I think that's a good way. And there's a strong enough cast there initially. That there's like what twenty characters generally around that that uh, for the standard Dark Soccer's characters, and then you yeah, just layer around new, there. Yeah, so then you layer in new ones after that. I think that's that's how you bring Dark Soccer's back. Do I necessarily absolutely want it to be like that? No, I'd rather it just be a standard fighting game. But I think for Capcom to actually do it and maybe get more eyes on it, make make that free to play, tons of costumes, monetize it that way. No, I mean, I think that makes perfect sense. It's a very good choice since, like, 
Capcom's clearly scared of making a new Dog Stalkers because they they might consider it as a big fail. So making it a free to play with probably you know less effort and then having people like oh look see we never forgot about Dog Stalkers is something that can also be successful in terms of bringing the fans back because you know, a lot of people would like that. You mean like making it like a double A game instead of like a giant, yeah, you know, double A yeah. engine, crazy pinnacle graphics. Like it has a unique art style in the same way that like Ghosts and Goblins had a unique art style. Not like that, but like yeah. an identity, you know, yeah. but it's not, yeah, yeah. it's obviously not Devil May Cry 6 looking. No, no, I, I, I don't even think that's what a lot of people want to see Dark Star because the whole appeal of it was look at how cartoony and over the top uh, this is. Yeah, there's an edge to it. There's like violence for sure. But I, I like uh, enough people it, it, just in the comments of her Street Fighter Six video. There's not people. It's like I, I don't want a realistic Street Fighter Six. I came around to the idea, but there's still people like I. That's not what Street Fighter is to me. Um, so for Dark Stalkers, it's like triply so because it was never realistic all these characters like they're 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 uh warner brothers cartoons for all intents and purposes they they're so emotive so like i, I think a double a i mean double i'd rather a free just to play dark stalkers I, i'd rather just arxis make it because if anyone can <laughs> can can do that with that art style and the wacky emotive characters like you can take a couple of guilty gear characters and say oh this character's from dark stalkers and you'd probably be like yeah they are aren't they make a little and, quiz and, about it yeah, exactly. Darkstalkers or Guilty Gear. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, uh, would you choice. would you be okay with like if they use Street Fighter V's engine in terms of like how they made the costumes? Because some DLC characters in Street Fighter V actually have yeah. Darkstalker costume, right? Ed is no, Dimitri. I, I think th they look all terrible. All mm. the Darkstalkers costumes like look odd. It needs a different art style than Five. Yeah. It, yeah. It absolutely does. And plus, you already know what the character that's wearing that costume is. Oh, it's Man. That's not Felicia. That's Manat cosplaying as Felicia. Doesn't look <laughs> right. So, um, I you know, God bless the 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 character designers that had to make those, but they all look terrible. Like some of the other Capcom collaboration costumes, they look good. Uh, I didn't mind them, but all the Dark Soccer's ones, they're just, it's too wild of a game to to saddle on to on top of another game that was never designed for it. But Dark yeah. Soccer's is my choice. What about you guys? Uh, Justin, go ahead. Man, you know, once you said Dark Soccer's, personally, it just makes complete sense. But if I had to choose something different, I would love to see uh, Rival Schools. Uh, Rival Schools yeah. is something that I feel like I haven't seen forever and it's one of those forgotten games that people just never talked about like when was the last time they were featured in the game was it like cvs2 of kiosuke um because like street I would fighter say, I, I, five I, I, it's street fighter five no duh akira i'm sorry besides <laughs> besides akira besides akira i mean yes. yeah it was it was probably a kiosuke of cvs2 uh talk yeah, to Noga versus so. capcom Oh, oh shit! Never Batsu. mind. Yeah, there's Look at this guy over here. They get sprinkled here, here and there. They get sprinkled they're in the here background and there. in Street yeah, Fighter yeah. Five as well. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're in the beach stage and everything. Knowledge. So it's one of those things where it's just like, I would love for them to come back, just because I mean, I think Akira had a pretty good presence for a lot of people that they were like, they, one, they didn't know, maybe they didn't know too much about her, but Capcom made her really cool in terms of like she has air combos. She's so the fun. fact, right? So so the fact that she has air combos meaning rivals cuz that's the rival school engine, it's kind of will bring back the whole air combo phase for Capcom since Capcom hasn't done air combos in a while. So I would say rival schools mm -hmm. for me. Yeah, um I, 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 and I think it's like, it's, it's obvious that like Capcom stuff immediately pops into my head. I was going to say like a Capcom all-star situation to just say, you know, fuck it, just do it all. Give it to me. Like, yeah. Throw it all into one game and just let it be, let it be this thing. Just give it like a double A like art style, similar to the, the effect in Street Fighter V, the new ink effect, the thing that they got going on, the uh, uh, cell shading. Yeah, cell shading yeah, yeah. It doesn't need to be the crazy high poly characters that SF5 has, but something around like the middle of the road, you know, that'd be completely fine. Um, something in the middle of the road between that and like Smash, you know, like something right in between there would be a completely acceptable game. But that wouldn't be my number one choice. Um, I, we already talked about it earlier. VF6, I think, is the top nom of the mm -hmm. next game that I think will actually be free to play and will not just be like the PS Plus free to play. I think they're going to like PSO2 it and Battle Pass and all that kind of stuff. I think that's I think that's their game plan for VF6 and it'll look good. It'll actually visually look great and might be scalable back to ps4 i think mm. they'll do that 
I honestly think they'll do that. And it'll probably, it'll probably be PlayStation exclusive, most likely, which is going to maybe suck. But my number one pick is definitely KI. A future Killer Instinct game that either uh, is, is completely free to play, where like the actual online functionality of people playing each other and fighting each other is just absolutely free. And then there's other, mom there's other elements and moments in the game that you can monetize on between like battle passes, if not customization stuff, if not other gameplay modes, like potentially maybe the arcade mode is a part of like a full package that you can buy. So you get mo monetize ultras. Like you, every, every, Different ultras. everyone, everyone has their own ultra, but you can get other ultra sequences. Why not? Hell yeah. Like, and maybe, maybe they, maybe they aren't going to be like the crazy musical ultras. Cause those take a lot of effort, but like, just like speedy ultra, like, like a classic KI2 ultra or something like that. I think that stuff is like easily monetizable. Okay. You guys, you guys, you guys might not, might notice, but like, so were the ultras from KI one, two, and then the modern one, were they all technically the same or, or are they all different for like the same character? Uh, they're all pretty different. They're all different. Like, so yeah, so you could just you could just pretty much pay for like this is from K or kids KI one ultra or or yeah. orchids KI two ultra. Yeah, as close as close to the KI one or KI two ultra as possible. Yeah. 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 People pay monetize, for that easy. Monetize the booty copter. Like, <laughs> booty Max will copter. buy that. I'll buy that, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I think we beat we beat every element of free to play today, gentlemen. So it's a good stuff all around. Thank you. I can't wait for the future. The future is now. For, <laughs> I'm not going to let this podcast in. I love you guys. <laughs> love okay, you too. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Hey, love you too. I think Capcom does a great job when they're adding like collaboration characters. <laughs> what? I've never been able to extend this way. <laughs> oh god, I gotta get the helmet on. Oh god, oh god. Wait a minute, our guy's a bad guy the whole time. I just think it's crazy that I'm better at video games now than when I was like 16. That is how you fix all the problems with all these games. I feel like toy distribution is so different than it used to be. They resculpted over the chest they gave him a flak jacket over it i laugh when i see among us but i'm not having fun inside i'm just <laughs> it's a reflex no you took my joke <laughs>